Hello YouTubers and welcome! In this tutorial I want to talk about personas in Affinity Designer. Everyone who starts working in Affinity Designer must understand why those personas exist and what they for. And today we will answer this question. But wait a minute, what does persona mean? A persona is a working environment and just exists in Affinity Designer. When you open up the application, you will be working in the default designer persona and you can find this persona in the top left corner over here. Basically, this workspace is for vector creation and I will create more tutorials about this persona where we will look at different tools and techniques in more details. Please subscribe to not miss that. Now let's quickly have a look at what we can do using the designer persona. You can do things such as drawing lines using different tools. Something like that. Keep in mind that most popular tool for this persona is a pen tool. With this tool you basically can create any curve or shapes. Something like that. You also can draw shapes such as rectangles, circles, and you may notice a small gray triangle over here. This indicates that this button represents a group of tools rather a single tool. Let's click on it to see what inside there and let's select something as an example. You also can create text. Choose a different style, change color. As you probably noted that each element appears in the layer panel over here. Let's return to our shapes and let's see how we can fill this shape with a color. This circle represents an object's color and another circle on the top represents the stroke of our shape. Let's choose a color here as well. Also you easily can control a transparency here or you can choose gradient over here. Basically you can do a lot of things in designer persona. But I will not go into more details at the moment. Let's move to the top left corner again and click here to select a pixel persona. You can see that left part changed to different tools. You can see marquee tools over here, selection tool, selection brush tool, pixels tool and other tools as well. In this persona you can make freehand shapes, you can make brush based selections, you could add pixels, you could erase pixels, you can combine vector and pixels persona and create a texture for example. Let's quickly have a look at what we can do here. Let's select paint brush tool, change a color over here, select a brush and draw a texture, something like that. Now we can take this texture and move to the vector layer and as you can see it is masked now. Let's go ahead and play with layer blending and see how the layer blends the pixels to the layer beneath. You also can play with other tools such as smudge and blur. And it was quick intro to the pixel persona. Let's move on to the last persona. Again, go to the top left corner and find export persona. Click on it and this persona transfer you to all possible ways to export your elements. You can slice up your elements and you could select the export preset for this image. Let's leave this as a PNG. Let's add another one and let's add a slice scaling here. You also can add another format over here. 
and let's select SVG as an example. You also can export those slices separately or together. Basically, that's it what you need to know about Affinity Designer personas. As Affinity Designer manuals say, they think of persona as a different ways of working within your application. If you want to work purely with vector tools, you can design in the default designer persona. For additional raster textures and pixel brush strokes operation, the pixel persona is the choice for you. One final persona, export persona, is ideal for exporting specific areas of design as usable graphics. You can switch between personas with a single click. With the workspace tools and panel changing to that persona's way of working. If you like this video, don't be shy to press thumbs up and please do not forget to subscribe to not miss other videos. And see you soon!